This is TTT. Live for local. There's movement at the top of the table. A maiden win registered in relegation space. A host of goals in match week six. And a top level coach is on the panel. All tonight on Full Steam. Welcome to First Team. I'm your host, Wayne Cunningham, along with ace journalist and commentator, Jovan Ravello, and the professional's professional, senior men's national team head coach, Angus Eve. Angus, a special welcome to you here on First Team. Uh, it's all about the TTPFL. Tell us uh, briefly your thoughts on the league so far, uh, the first five rounds, how do you think, the first six rounds? Well, firstly, first, thanks for having me here on, on the program. Um, I think you've all been doing a great job so far. And um, looking at the league for the first five rounds, I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, it's a long time we haven't had a league in Trinidad. And I think that the, the players, the coaches, everybody, the management team, the organizers of the league has done a tremendous job so mm -hmm. far. And, um, you know, shows like this would only help. Well, with that said, we're going to get right into the action. We have a, a whole lot of highlights to go. And a lot of goals. It was a bevy of goals this, <laughs> this week here. Uh, in the TTPFL, we have all, but not all, most of them, and we go to it right now with we Jovan. Begin, we begin with the ACPOS versus Caledonia AIA match. ACPOS coming into this match as league leaders, of course. Caledonia with a point to prove. This was played at the St. James Barracks. The opening goal came from the penalty spot. This would have been a call there by the referee. Pretty basic. Yeah, well, Carlisle Mitchell went in, you know, and um, Carlisle is a very experienced player. From the time he felt uh, the the touch, he, he went over, you know. <laughs> so, and um, you know, good penalty by a young kid there. And um, Caledonia is a very young team uh, with uh, just a sprinkling of uh, experienced players. Brandon Semper getting us started, but here come ACPOS, Jamil Neptune, fifteenth minute. First goal. You said I've a little too much mirth in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, Neptune has been doing very well for the for the national team. Um, and uh, he's normally playing as a left back, uh, but he's playing left midfield in this um, setup with um, AC Potter's play. How about this one? This was a great goal from another player in your national setup, John Paul Rushford. Yeah, Rushford is, is, is having a really good time. Um, he's in Diego. Yeah. Um, the vision of the young kid, the technique that he has, I mean, this is a tremendous goal. No matter what league it is, <laughs> this is a goal of the week mm. contender. Yeah, first half ending 1-all, well, 2-1 to ACPOS, sorry, and then ACPOS putting it on thick in the second half. Neptune again showing up at the doorstep. Yeah, he's playing on that left side and he's ghosting in and uh, not good tracking by the Caledonia team. Uh, at all, and Neptune seems to be getting in at will, coming out from the left on the blind side. Speaking of at will, running free on goal here, that is the hat-trick, Jamil Neptune, 65th minute. Mm. It's funny seeing him score a hat-trick, you know, from yeah, the left-back position. But um, he's not playing left-back, he's actually playing as an inverted winger, and uh, you see the, the fruits of the labour. Before this match week, I could hardly remember shooter scoring. No, I can't say, well, I see shooter score. You know, you always know he's a hard working left back coming up. He, he makes some runs, you know, forward. Yeah. But to say I saw him score a goal at some point in time, I, I really can't remember. Well, he's a very talented player yeah. also. So, yeah. Yeah. And does that, does that actually give you another dimension to consider when it comes to Mr. Nephew? Of course. I mean, uh, you have the likes of Jovin Jones, Noah Powder, who, who, who started off at left back yeah. and now they're playing in midfield. When you have a country like ours with not a massive pool of players, you look to play players in different positions. So he just give us another option. Right. We're going to go to the second match in our lineup this week. Terminex Lohogata Rangers versus the former league leader Central FC. Movement at the top. This one would be a Shootout. Fourth minute. The goals will begin to score in this match. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> a bit of a build up here. Very patient from the Rangers. Looking for their spaces. And then mm. this ball across. Who shows up? Atula Guerra. 
Yeah, he's been in good nick. Um, I think he's scored in every wrong game so far. Yeah. Um, you know, very experienced player, very experienced campaigner, played abroad, and now we're back here playing his trade again in the league. Penalty call there. 28th minute. Karen coming steps up. Ball pass. Goal. Mm. Yeah, one of the old players coming back to hunt them. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Ball Pest has been a, a consistent performer in the league for a number of years and um, probably deserve a little bit more. But in 29th, here come the Rangers again. Isaiah Raymond with the go-ahead goal for them. That is the second for them in this match. And he's making those runs from midfield, Isaiah. He plays a very um, stubborn midfield type uh, game. He's a number eight. He plays some box-to-box -box and that, that's one of the things that box-to-box -box player does. Both the Rangers, Isaiah Lee scoring in the 45th minute, 3-1. Yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah Lee, he, we, we, he was at uh, Naparima College, uh, yeah. outstanding player, and now he's playing on the flanks here. You probably uh, Valencia Lee? Yes. yes, he is. He is yes. Second half, 49th minute, Leslie Joel Russell, good flick on. Yeah, you don't <laughs> normally see me Joel Russell <laughs> scoring a goal. Uh, that's why I look at the guys Old, jumping on them and chucking on them. I'm um, not known for his goal scoring ability, but uh, a great header from Joel. Answer back. Anselm Jackson, 56 minutes for Central FC. Elias Worm, you know, I've yeah. seen Worm for a yeah. while. Um, the La Hoqueta uh, Worm. There's a, it's a lot of guys who was with La Hoqueta up to last season and now with uh, playing the train with the Central team. Yeah, and more from Central. Keyshawn St. Rose has had a good season so far, and this was a, one of his best strikes so far, I had to say. Yeah, good link up with Kudin Corbin, Kudin Corbin, who played on the flanks. Cutting in and playing a good true ball to him and a, a fine finish from St. Rose. One of the standouts from St. Augustine back in some years gone by. Yeah, but that comeback was not to be. This is the penalty. Daniel David stepping up. Taking his time. Goal, 85th minute. Yeah, Daniel David. Uh, I, me I remember him for a long time with Trendsetter Hawks, actually. Yeah. Young player who came up through the Trendsetter Hawks rank. Dada continues to do good work uh, with Trendsetter Hawks and. Um, David is one of the protégés who came to that, that, that program. Eight goals in that match, 5-3, La Hoggeta Rangers <laughs> winning against Central FC. And that was some good entertainment. I don't know if people say what the, the Pro League good and the Premier League not good. I mean, not seeing anything. I mean, I had to watch English League. That was entertainment. Of course. I mean, back and forth, eight goals. It was a, it was a goal fest according to, uh, to Jovan. <laughs> but it was good build-up, good play. You know, the ground could have do with a little water in, but... <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess the grounds, I guess you could see that the grounds are, and in Premier League are much better. So it's, yeah. it's really difficult when you're judging the guys based on the, the facilities and stuff that we have, opposed to what the facilities are. And this, mm. not speaking about the ground, but, you know, guys not being paid all year wrong and stuff like that, you know, it's very difficult for them to maintain a high level of football mm. all, year, all year wrong, as is the Premier League and other leagues around the world. They came out second best in this match. Well, what do you feel about Central FC season so far? Um, they're having a, a very consistent season. I know the coach very well, Barlow. Um, he, he was St. Benedict's coach. I think he's one of the up-and-coming coaches uh, in Trinidad and Tobago football. And you see, he is passed on that philosophy. He likes to play football. And he has players who can play. You know, the likes of Kadim Corbin and these guys are, mm. um, you know, Young St. Rose, mm. Ball Pess in midfield, Daniel Cyrus, leadership qualities at the back. So it's a very balanced team. I think they're a little bit aged. But it's a very balanced team. I watch any team, both teams. You have Wolpes, Karen Cummings at Central. You have uh, Atula Guerra at, uh, at La Hoqueta. You know, there's two players who, who are wrong the scene a long time. They touch the national teams for long periods and uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, you think this is needed throughout the league? Uh, that experience at the top lead any team? Because they, you also have Carly. We now see Carly Mitchell yeah, yeah. with, 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 with Carly, yeah. you know? It, and uh, and and it, it bearing fruit with these experienced leaders. Of course, you know people say that uh, you need to change up the team. But you look at Portugal in the, in the World Cup. They had uh, Pepe, who was 40 years old, yeah. he's playing at the back, helping the the younger ones to come forward. So you need some experience in your group. And it, it does, for me, it doesn't matter the age of the player. Once you can perform, you could be 16, 17, or 41 years old. Once you can perform, you can play. Real man putting on the boots right now with that statement. <laughs> we will take a break right now when we come back. More from first team.
with another edition of Caribbean Week in Review. And we outside. Yes, guys, we are back with season two. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to Touch Tobago Live. We are on TTT Limited. We are giving you everything Tobago. So come touch Tobago with me now. Your girl GD outside. I am Penny Gomez, and welcome to Pop. Oh my God. Queen of it's season two. Miss Lucy, that's oh, what about to call you. I lose that eye. We want you to make us a pop smoothie. I don't make smoothie, I just drink wine. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you big on your sense? <laughs> what is that? There's <laughs> a reason I don't do choreography. Why you come on this show, boy? <laughs> Look, I don't entertain, I know. <laughs> kind of slight, the iconic. Everything is intact. Everything on, track, on point, as we say here on the show. Tiger Tanks Club Sando versus W Connection is our third game in focus at the very lush Manny Ram John Stadium. It's going to be an early opportunity here, not falling to Sando. But soon enough, ninth minute, Michael Basdeo showing up late. And with great effect, that is the first goal of this match. And that's Nicholas Dillon. Nicholas Dillon, he missed the first chance. Uh, but then he, he then he created one for Matt, Mikey Basdeo. Good opportunity. Isaiah Hudson hitting a very good free kick. Well saved. And then you'll see the keeper. Um, you know, they always say keepers are mad. You know, Russ wouldn't like that. Yeah. I hear you see it last week. <laughs> but keeper made Myers made a fantastic save. And then presented a uh, guilted chance to, yeah. the, to the W Connection defender. Yeah, Dwight Pope scoring in the 53rd minute. But more from Tiger Tanks Club Sando. Sion Thomas. Yeah, last Sion, post unmarked. Sion was playing for AC Port of Spain last season. And now he's transferred. He's gone all the way from Port of Spain up to his south arm. Yeah. And um, <laughs> producing up there. I wonder why. <laughs> Very <laughs> next minute, Jabari Forbes. And great work here from Nathaniel. Uh, um, that James. is Nathaniel James Natty. Yeah. Yeah. Good Nathaniel had a, a fantastic game. Uh, he's a young kid, just mm. 18 years old, but he's showing his worth um, in the league. And I think he was involved in every goal they scored. Yeah, connection just trying to put themselves back into contention in this match. Proved very difficult against a sprightly Club Sando team. Found the going very hard in the closing stages. That match would end 3-1 in favor of the Cornell Glen coached Tiger Tanks Club Sando. <laughs> I like how you added the Cornell Glen coach Tiger Tanks Club Sando. We're going, we're going to Club Sando, former coach, Angus Eve. Angus, let's touch on Nathaniel James a bit because I knew he was with W, right? Uh, he came up through the, the Elita youth program, yeah. all through under W Connection and so forth. And, and as a youngster, he's making a mark in the league. Yeah, Nathaniel, um, we took him to Jamaica with us. He was with the national and the 23s. He graduated to the senior team. Um, and you can see why. Uh, he has a lot of talent, a lot of potential. And um, he, he, him, along with young Forbes, who scored the goal, he's mm. just 17 years old, Four too. 17. Yeah, okay. and um, that uh, young kid, Cooper, at the back, who is marshaled by, by um, Josiah Tringenham, yeah. who's, who's the also guy. the big guy in the back. You know, he reminds me so much of Marvin yeah, Andrews in the way that he plays. So, But Natty is, is definitely one for the future, I think, um, and the future might be sooner than later for him. And speaking of sooner or later, you've, you've made a habit of carrying what we would consider two young players previously in Trinidad and Tobago. How important it is to introduce teenagers to the seniors? Every time uh, I pick a team, I like to carry two young players. Uh, I remember uh, Brazil carrying a young Ronaldo. Mm. He didn't play, but he... ...74.
I think it would have been better for I think it's for Mate. I think he was in the 78, 78, and then he in 82. I think it's 78. Not a hundred, but they had a young Maradona on, on, on the side, and he didn't play. England carry a young Theo Walcott, and, and then he, he became Theo mm. Walcott after, you know. So um, I believe that you, you, you pick the, the young player who you think has the most potential to go forward and keep bringing him up because you don't normally play 23 men, so you mm. can fit in two kids um, and, and keep um, that development rolling. Well, we're going to go to the next uh, set of highlights now. What is the, the next game we have? That we have is Defence Force versus Prison Service. Another battle between the services. But, um, Another battle, is it? <laughs> <laughs> battle, is it? Yeah, remember, Angus battle was, in <laughs> prospect. <laughs> Angus was all army too, you know. So. So <laughs> clearly, the army had the, most, clearly um, had the bigger guns in this game. <laughs> of course, Rion Moore bringing more. For this army team, nineteenth <laughs> minute inside joke. <laughs> One minute outside now. Twenty-first minute, Jelani Phoenix came up with the second, showing up, put that one past the keeper. It's two 0 to defense force. Yeah, we actually took Jelani. Uh, he went to Jamaica with us. I think he's a much improved young player, um, and definitely one one for the future. Again, more from more. Very delicate touch there. The second of the match, 37th minute. That is 3 0 to the army. Yeah. Defense the force was running right in this match. Mm. Um, you know, they really, I think they lost the previous match before and they tell themselves, you know, they really, they, I think it was the club sound, if I was yeah. mistaken. And they really came back to make amends in this game. Back with a vengeance and this strike from Brent Sam. Great yeah. angle. He wanted to score. He kept it and said, no. I'm going to score, and he did it well. 45th, what's three? Bully ball from Brent Sam, the <laughs> man. Putting them up 4-0 going into the half. This is the second half action. They took a little while to get back into the, th the swing of things. This is the 65th minute. Hashim Asiya, first of his two. Takes his time and just tucks it in. Hashim Asiya, one of the most composed players I know in the league. Never flustered, yeah? Never flustered. <laughs> I mean, he's very, very composed. Um, really good player, uh, consistent player for the years for defense force, and there he goes passing it into the back of the net. And we see a, one of one of our best uh, young referees, uh, Mr. Cecil Hines, doing the game. I think um, all wrong, good football from both teams, but defense was just better on the day. And uh, see Shiggy Garcia um, going it off the line. Yeah, yeah this is LaShawn Roberts, the super sub. This third and three. 83rd minute. Where he come from? That is number seven <laughs> for defense force. 7-0, prison service, and any words there for the technical staff? And you're a big fan <laughs> of the technical staff out at the prison service yeah. team. I, no, I like Veronique. That is yeah. His, yeah, I like yeah. Veronique. Yeah. I find he, he, he has a, a nice take on the game, and he's technically sound. You know, and um, I watch him operate over the years. But um, what's your take on prisons coming up to the pros? Out there, you could say, well, out of the Super League. You, you're seeing where they are. Mm -hmm. And um, it, 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 there, there's a definite, I think people don't understand the levels. Mm -hmm. A player coming from Colleges League, a player coming from the Super League, they, they're basically a Super League team now coming up in the pro ranks. Um, and and he write, everything he said about Veroni, I love the guy. We, we did our B UEFA license together. Mm -hmm. um, he's a fantastic coach. He looks at the game analytically. Yes. I, um, I looked at them play. They're playing very good football, want to, good principles, want to come out of the back and stuff like that. Um, and then it's like almost like Pep Guardiola when he went the first time in the English Premier League. He had to readjust himself, readjust the way that they were going to play. And I think Veroni would learn as he goes along, that he may have to give up some of his principles to get results. You've coached at all levels. What would you say would be the, the biggest learning curve between Super League and, and the professionals in Trinidad and Tobago? The players are, are, are more full-time. Most of the Super League teams, they were, they were players who would go to work. They're mostly prison officers, so they will go to work, and then they will have to come and train late in the afternoon. That was a massive difference. So the, super, the Pro League players could have, was more flexible to train all day because that's, that's actually their jobs, as opposed to guys in the Super League who had jobs but still play football. All right, and with that, we will look at the match week seven results. It was 
A week of 28 goals in six matches, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. If you're not watching this league, you're missing out. <laughs> really and truly, the two matches we haven't con covered today, Police FC with another win. They've hurdled themselves up the table, Elijah <laughs> Belgrave <laughs> and Kareem Freitas winning it late after Kunupia went up in the 37th minute. And then Sao Jablote getting their first win of the tournament against Point Fort in Civic in that other match. Nicole Steven scoring very late, 90 plus 2. And uh, that was one of your teams as well, back in the day. Double T. Yes, yes, they were. <laughs> uh, but I think, um, go to the police, um, hey. Richard started off very slow, Richard Hood. Mm -hmm. um, normally, you know, he starts off much better than that. And I think um, the type of coach he is, you see now starting to get the results. Um, it was, I think it, they're in transition. He had a number of young players in the side, and they've been a bit of a transition. But um, I, I, I know he will come good. I think he's one of the most consistent coaches that we have had. And, and Jablote, again, the win, you know, Marvin uh, yeah. was with Defence Force. Uh, he's, he's now coaching uh, Jablote. They're a very young team. I think possibly the youngest, youngest team, team yeah. um, in the league. So they'll, they'll, they'll be a bit up and down. You know, sometimes they'll perform, sometimes they won't. I think, uh, but Marvin is good enough. Uh, to get them on the dry track. All right, then, as we said, their first win, and if you saw the celebration with regards to when that, <laughs> that goal was scored and when the final whistle was yeah. blown, it was really a celebration like the win the FA Cup. Yeah, and yeah, Nicole so. Stevens is actually the captain yes. and the most, most senior yeah. player that they actually have. And he's about 12. <laughs> <laughs> but and let's, take a look. <laughs> let's take a look at this week's standings. After seven matches played, ACPOS are on top with 18 points. They've just suffered one loss. They remain on top of the standings. Club Sando move up from three to second. Moving up from fourth to third is Timonex Lockhart Rangers. Central FC drop from second to fourth. Defense Force stay level at fifth. Police FC move from nine to sixth. Biggest movers this week. Caledonia AIA moved down one from yeah. six. Don't say that so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Whisper it next time. As does Point Fourth and Civic and W Connection, all of them suffering losses. Kunupi FC stay level at 10. Samuel Jablati off the cellar and 12. Number 12 is now the prison service. They were 11th last week. Dire times. Yeah. What I see in here from these standings, Rangers come in. You understand? Yeah. Because they are the games in hand. Yeah, but the two games that they actually have in hand, and they're in a very good position with yeah. two games in hand, but you always say points on the board. There's points That's on the point. board. The two games they actually have in hand is police and defense force. Sure. So <laughs> it won't be too easy matches. As you see, both teams now um, getting their stride. Mm -hmm. um, so it, wouldn't, it would be two bumper matches for us to look at. But um, yeah, Rangers is on a good run. All right. We'll take a break right now when we come back. We have more from First Team. I know that you don't agree with your own way. You can trust me on this. This time, whatever you're doing, you're doing right. I was going to come to your house. I'm going to ask you for forgiveness. देखिए आप भी एक माँ हैं आप समझ सकती हैं मैं सिर्फ अपने बेटे को प्रोटेक्ट करना चाहती हूँ कोर्ट में जो कुछ भी हुआ उसका बोझ लेकर हम अपनी जमीन पर रोज नहीं चल सकते आदित्य प्लीज you don't understand how things work. Sometimes it's the only way to get a case against people who you know are guilty. I know the police have a tough time. I know they are misunderstood very often. But it's people like you who give the police a bad name. You want to get ahead at all costs, even at the cost of your soul. You make the population lose confidence in the service. Images here from the TTT Easter Cup. This is Media United versus Knockers in the final. That was a shot from the man called Kane. Not as prolific as the other Kane, but 
And a goal from Knuckles. That was K40, the eventual tournament MVP. K40. Great game from 40, of course, representing TTT. The media team came out in good spirit. They gave a good account of themselves. I should say we gave a good account, and this was their equalizer in this match. It went down to penalties. That goal from Tremaine was the opener. It's Cast and Cupid scoring for the Media United team. That was a goal from Shaq. Then we had a couple of misses here. That was Kane deciding it. Trophy staying in TTT again. Trophy staying in TTT, yeah. Safety. Well done. You know, hats off to Assassin Singh. Real touches. Work hard. So, first time I see a DJ play that in, in, in all the TTT Cup. Yeah, the DJs and them is just talk plenty. But Assassin Singh, much props. <laughs> yeah, man. Real quality football from them. Um, I know Angus would have been scouting players over the last couple of months. Did you see anything uh, uh, um, in those clips that you... What I noticed... Uh, the game had to be a long one because it started in the in the bright, at the light <laughs> of the day, and at the end it goes on the light. So <laughs> I don't know how much extra time that game had in it. <laughs> yeah, so really good fun. Um, but what I wanted to ask you on the, on the question of scouting, we have Kylie Overy in the team. We have a lot of youth players in the team. Is this a time of... Of really introducing new blood into the national system do you think that that is that was needed after this transition period most definitely um it's we in a rebuild i think um uh, what has happened is that we had so much good results you know people didn't under do understand that we are actually in a rebuild so when you're in a rebuild you normally you stumble a little bit more so i think we give people a little bit more hope than than we should have um they, it, it looked a little bit easier than it was so expectations started to rise and when you see stadiums falling in trinidad you know that expectations uh, are rising so um i would say yes we want to continue to to bring in players continue to develop the young players and um every time that we have a window or, or, or outside of every time we have a window mm -hmm. now we we have a, a tournament so outside of the windows is where we can expose players expose the locally based players because although they're playing in the league here they, they, it's not going to help us now it's going to help us in, in in the medium term but we still need to um expose them at the international level because it's a different level of football but you see what you need from the ttpfl most definitely i mean the league is is well organized well run um, you know, it, it's 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 advertised, it's it's showing all over the place, and you can see the talent coming out and coming through the league. A lot of young players coming through. All right, and let's take a look at the coming fixtures this week uh, into the weekend. Tomorrow we have a match that is rescheduled between Defence Force and the Hawkeye Rangers. One of their two games in hand, so we'll see really their title aspirations in yeah. this match. On the weekend, though, Saturday, 15th April, we have three, four games, a doubleheader in La Hokuta. That is ACPOS versus Sawa Jablity. Jablity on a high, ACPOS the highest. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes, La Hokuta Rangers versus Caledonia AIA. And Wayne Cunningham will be in that dressing room trying mm -hmm. to G up those players. Yep, yep. W Connection yeah. versus Point Fortin Civic is at the Manny Ram John Stadium at the Larry, Go La Larry Gome Stadium. Central FC meets Police FC. Defence Force plays Kunupia FC on Sunday at the Arima Velodrome in the first game at 4 o'clock. Prison, Prison Service FC plays the Tiger Tanks Club Sando in the second match at 6.15 to round out the fixtures I for be match day 8. Though. Angus, match of the week, what do you think from that fixture? Um, it, 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 well, Defence Force is not actually in this match of the yeah. week, but the, the game tomorrow has to be the match of the week from yeah. that sense, yeah. you know, um, defense force bouncing back to, to win a 7-1 and Rangers, who is on, in a good vein of form, I definitely think that one is one to watch. And then, um, you know, obviously, um, Rangers and Caledonia, I would say from the other matches, that would be the one to, to really watch. Um, the Rangers and, and, and Caledonia because Caledonia a little bit hurt and they may want to bounce back and then Rangers having a midweek game, you know, the legs might be a little bit wobbly and Caledonia and, and Ham might have an opportunity to bounce. Yes. You know we just move. <laughs> he was almost a Caledonia, you know? Almost. That's no, what I call him. actually the was. The professional professional. Yeah. From a young man. Yeah. I was the manager and the man come and talk to me like, <laughs> you know, like a top professional. But... <laughs> We have run out of time. That's our show for tonight. But we'll leave you with something. 
we here at TGT Limited know it's one of ours, and we have to pay homage to that man tonight, the man they call Leonard Armstrong, a true, true bowler here from TTT. Good night from First Team. This is TTT. Live for local.